Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. And as you can see here, it's a little crowded on set today. <laughs> we brought out our, uh, one of our two favorite guys. It's the, uh, the usual suspects. Sam. The usual suspects, but they, they contacted and said, we want to show you guys something and we need you to be on the set while we demo it to blow your minds. And we don't know what they're doing. We don't know what they're doing. <laughs> so they're going to show us something. And then obviously they have, they have two computers here. It's connect, connected to um, Sam's Share Everyone, station. Share station, the jellyfish, right? We are on the jellyfish currently, right. yeah. And it's uh, basically it's two computers synced up, shared workflow, Final Cut 10, and uh, Mike came up with something really interesting that I think uh, hasn't really been done before. We should talk about it. I um, love that. Never been done before. Never been done before. So I'll just 10 seconds of back, 30 seconds of background on this. Uh, I was uh, talking to Michael Camus, who some of you probably know, about uh, shared... Uh, shared sequences between Avid and Avid and uh, Premiere and Premiere and Final Cut and Final Cut. And it got me thinking a little bit about uh, ways to do that to save clicks. And um, just literally a couple days ago, I went and decided, I wonder if this is possible. And let me tell you a little bit about what this is in just a minute. <laughs> um, what we have here is a, a library, small, a couple of sequences. This is a demo library from Sam's, uh, one of Sam's projects. And um, we wanted to find a way to, sh to share sequences between editors or assistant editors without disturbing them or without having them close their libraries. And, without um, checking out. Without, without no transfer out. libraries, right. none of that nonsense. Right. No coffee break. Uh, no closing or opening anything. No, well, there's some opening, but there's no closing. <laughs> so um, what I thought about, and I was just wondering about this, was... You can sync folders, you can sync files. Can you sync an open library? And the answer to this question is yes. Uh, so what we've done here is we have uh, sort of a set of libraries that we've built uh, as if we were all working together. Uh, one for Mark, one for Steve, one for Sam, one for myself. And we're syncing each one of those in the background silently every five seconds to another set of libraries. Uh, using a program called Sync Folders Pro. Let me just interject that, yes. that folks who are watching this are watching your computer screen. Yeah, that's the one recording. We're just recording screen. one. I'm closing a window now. Okay, yeah. that's my mom. Uh, <laughs> hi, so, mom. hi, mom. All right, so uh, we found this program called Sync Folders Pro. It's $8 on the App Store, and you can set up some parameters on this program to. Uh, sync your libraries. So here's what we did. Um, we set up a, on the share station, this is the jellyfish, a test, and inside each one of these folders, one for Mark, one for me, one for Sam, and one for Steve, are our working libraries, as you would do on any show. Everybody's got their own libraries, they do their own business, and then we set everyone's stuff up to sync into sync libraries, another set of libraries. So, and the sync updates every, where is it? Set an, you set an interval basically. Five right? seconds. Five yeah. seconds, okay. So five seconds there, five seconds there, five seconds there, five seconds there, all right. And it's syncing the library, not all the media? Or? Well, the media and the cache mm -hmm. are stored outside of the libraries. These libraries are very small files, easy to move around. And so when they're updating, basically, it's basically like you're updating an old Final Cut 7 project. It's extremely lightweight. It's all, the media is living on the, on the server and the cache is living separately, so it's not duplicating not your render oh, files yeah. or it's any of that it's stuff. It's basically just updating the database. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Correct. It's syncing it databases. Correct. Pretty much. All right, and, got, it. got it, got it. And it doesn't put anything inside the library because we've built these inside of folders. Okay. All right, so what we have, now if we go to Final Cut, Somewhere here. All right, so this is the edit to mic. All right, so inside of this uh, HQ event. event, I have a project. Now I'm going to snapshot that. So we've got, let's stretch this out a little bit so we can know we're not cheating. Okay, uh, well now we're showing the date, darn it. All right, anyway, um, That's you fine. can blur that doesn't, out. Doesn't matter, no, it doesn't okay. matter. Okay, um, so we're showing, this is a, a snapshot that was just made this second, and if I go into my 
sync library, which is in test, sync libraries from Mike. Where were we in the XQ? Mm -hmm. Let's see, where did it go? Oh, the HQ. There it HQ. is. So there's the HQ snapshotted library okay. in, a, in a totally separate library. So this huh. is a separate sync library separate that it did for you. Separate okay. library. Now, the idea, what? the idea is, what? that's what, what I said. The <laughs> idea is that people can just go on about their business and working. And if, Steve, you need to grab something from me, you just open up my sync library, pull out what you want, and close it and go go on working. And we never interfere with you, business, you don't because that's me. a synced library. You're working yeah. in your library, and when people want to take things, they take it from your synced library. Correct. And I also could say, oh, I have an event for you, Mark. And so you can just go, oh, get my to Mark event or something from there. But the idea would be you would grab it out of my synced library with uh, permission and notification or not, depending on what you want to do. And the really cool thing about this versus, say, the same thing on an Avid, where, you know, basically, on an Avid, you're going to open up a bin. It's going to, if somebody's using it, it's going to be locked. You can take something out, but you're never really sure when was that saved last time, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this, it is only ever going to be five seconds old. So <laughs> by the time you <laughs> click to open it, it's going to be completely current with what I'm doing. So you can go into, basically go into anybody's library on your network. Yeah even though they're in it and constantly working on it, mm -hmm. and grab anything out of that library that you need to put into your own library, your own event, whatever. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you would be... Uh, well, Matt Scientist excited. over here is working. I think he's okay. editing a feature right, All right. now. now Sam, Sam is working on something right now over here. We're hooked up to the same library, but you can't see his screen. Uh, but All it right. is, in fact, there. So, so I've been working this whole time, so... Uh, why don't we go ahead let, let and uh, uh, turn that background off? Uh, so turn that so background. explain what you're doing. You're actually so I'm just we can't see it. I've been just you're editing along. It. Um, so Mike, there's three events for you to grab. Okay. Uh, let's give it a second to sync here. But if you go into my synced library, all right. I'm just gonna say let's just do it at the finder level. Okay. So I'm gonna go uh, synced libraries from Sam. Open up this guy. Let's see, it's going to load. Hey, and there's three new events. Okay. I've got Hi Mark. Hi Mark. Hi Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi, Steve. Hi Steve. Hi Steve. Now, and where's that can... sequence you were working on? With uh, Hi titles? Steve. Okay, so in this one, there should be some titles. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Boom, title here. <laughs> so that's what, you were, that's what you were just making. Yeah, and yeah. That's... I, I can confirm that. I'm looking at Sam's screen, and it's identical to what I'm seeing on Mike's screen. Identical. Bing. Group go. workflow with the final cut, 10, virtual user group crew. And uh, the one other thing is basically if you then were to copy those events into your library, you'd or, be able to Or the to project, work with right? You could just take the project because right. you're pointing off pointing the same well, media. I think it's always a good idea to copy events rather than okay. projects to avoid Because then you can match clips. frame back and you don't get the duplicate clips, which okay. I have my clips. Right. I hate duplicate and clips. So, right. and so, so you're copying I'm those events into your it. own library. And now. if you have the matching uh, events like Mike has here between the two, when I, if you were to match frame back, it's going to go back to the correct event. So this is seamless integration across libraries. And just for fun, if, if Steve now wants to jump on what I've got in mind since I've done some work and we open up from Mike, they're now the same with these high... Mike, hi Mark, hi Steve, events. Did you just freak out a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so wait a minute. <laughs> That's great. Anybody in a shared environment can grab anybody's work and share anybody's work at any time with anybody else. It's actually a little bit smoother than bin locking, believe it or not. And it's, it's totally up to sync. It just seems like that should be built into the software. Well, you know what, I think there's, there's a company um, <laughs> and their, their, their name rhymes with Snapple. <laughs> um, who, I don't know what they're working on up there because they're, as we all know, they're very uh, private until something's ready to go. However, I think this is kind of a cool implementation of a, uh, a feature that is basically missing globally across editing systems. Mm -hmm. You can do this um, today for $8. You can do this today for $8 and, uh, you know, send us a check. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, is that, is that $8 per seat? 
Uh, no, no, you, not in the app. Yeah. Well, it depends well, on how you use the app store. No, well, but <laughs> it that's really a, that's doesn't a, matter. That's a good question. It really doesn't matter because if one computer on the network has this eight dollar piece of software, and you can you can disperse that cost out over four users, so at two bucks a piece. Okay, and if you amortize um, it over a few <laughs> years, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that the accounting um, departments will. I think that office. one computer can set up this entire share thing, and to set up the entire share thing takes just a minute, literally a minute or two to do what, uh, set up the share for what we just did here. Mm -hmm. wow. So so you know the day after this airs that that app on the App Store, the price is going to go up a thousand percent. <laughs> well, That's I wrote the developer. <laughs> it, it works, it works uh, at, a, at a low level with the free version. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I notified the developer we would be uh, touting his wares here today. So there you Incredible. go. Incredible. Yeah. Really I, great. So, and there's no other apps that do that kind of Synchronization. I'll bet you there's a hundred of them. This is yeah. just the one. Mike that was found over. this the other day. Yeah, so that's the, the there's at least one that does it. Yeah. yeah, this was this was uh it was the best reviewed piece of software. I'm sure mm -hmm. there's others that do it. I thought of Chronosync, um, but this was cheaper. Eight bucks. Eight bucks. Sorry, really interesting. Really interesting. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, well I'd be interested to see the, the, the what comes next after getting this out here. Yeah. yeah. Well excellent. So first of all, thanks Mike. Thanks Sam for joining us on our show. You guys are like Part of the Mac Break team now. I'm just going to have you do the show next time. So, yeah. It's awesome. That's been your secret plan the whole time, hasn't it? Yeah. We need Suc an exit strategy. Succession plan. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Mark and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Anyway, um, watch more Mac Breaks. Check all the links below. Check out wemakemovies.org. Check out... FCPXfeatures.co. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. For the book that and I wrote. And Ripple Training, of course. And we'll see you in the next episode of Mac Break Studio.